everybody, and welcome to Fit Chicks Chat. My name is Laura Jackson. And I'm Amanda Quinn. And on today's podcast, we are chatting. It's a business podcast, and it's also Love Day. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so in today's podcast, we are talking about love, but from a business aspect. And we're talking about the whole concept of loving what you do like so much, you love it so much, but you are not loving your clients or loving your business the way you're supposed to. And this is a huge thing that we see, especially in our industry, because of course we not only certify women as fitness and nutrition coaches, but we also have business programs where we help you build amazing businesses. And we see the passion in women who are so amazing at what they do and they love fitness and they love nutrition and they love helping people transform their health and their minds and their bodies but they get so stuck in the actual like learning about what they do. They don't realize that, Whoa, I've got to go get clients <laughs> and I've got to like, got to love my business, the business side of it at the same level. If I want to be able to do this for a living. So yeah. there's a, kind of a disconnect and it becomes this kind of mindset thing where like, I even had a conversation the other day with one of our students and she was like, you know, it's just so hard for me because I'm not a business person. And I'm like, you need to stop saying that. Cause yeah, you it's like, no, get yeah, that out of your brain. It's, it's these limiting beliefs that we put on ourselves from the jump saying, I'm not a salesperson and I've done it. I've said that before too. Like I'm not yeah. a salesperson. I'm not, I'm not a business person. I'm not a marketer. I'm a fitness instructor. No, that's a, that's a mindset you have to get out of because you've got to love what you do and love it so much that you have to share it with the world. And the way to share it with the world is through growing your business, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I agree with you 100%. I think so many people get caught up in like the, they also get caught up in like the passion of like, well, I love this so much that like everybody else is going to love it too. And they're not actually listening to the market. They're not actually paying attention to like what the market is saying to them, um, what their people are saying to them, what their ideal clients, or they're not even like putting in the energy to figure out what their ideal clients are asking or wanting and needing. Completely. It becomes, I think, you know, like, like, let's give an example of that. So just even saying that, like, give an example of what that would look like. So it's like, well, what do you mean? Like, like my passion is anxiety for dogs. Which we <laughs> <always talk about. laughs> this is our internal example when we're talking about business ideas. We're like, if my passion is anxiety for dogs, we use this as an example every single time, but I can't believe yeah. we're talking about this publicly. It's just like, that's our like go-to example when we're having conversations for not. <laughs> because we always talk about like, there's a very specific niche who would even care yeah, about that. Of course would it is. It's so that, niche. Would it be a program that people would actually pay for? Not that we're going to run a program about anxiety for dogs, but we just are using it as an example. It's just, it's our very clear example of a niche. Um, no, like for example too, like in, um, I have a friend of mine who, you know, for many years was like hosting concerts. Okay. And like, he wasn't listening to the market. He was hosting concerts and like, he would do all of these like underground, like I call them nerd rappers and like <laughs> all of these shows that like were super underground, super low key, really cool. But then he would pay X amount, say $10,000 for a show and he'd have 50 people show up. So then essentially yeah. his ticket to go see that artist that he was so passionate about would cost him like $8,000 or something crazy, right? Because it's like, that's the difference in his ROI. So he would always be losing money because he wasn't listening to his market. He wasn't well, he could have just gone and bought a ticket to go see the show for 50 bucks. Exactly. Or he could have also, you know, survey people or ask the question at a concert, like be like, Oh, like, you know, or even like on his social media and be like, I'm doing this show. How do people like, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you guys think? Like to at least feel for it rather than just going, I don't care. This is, I want, like, this is what I want. I think it's cool. I think it's next level. I want to do this. So it's the same thing in, in any business though. You have to be thinking about, I'm super passionate about this, but are other people just as passionate? Do they need it? And I need to ask them. I need to know that they actually need this. Like you have to have a clear, like clear response from your people. Sorry, go on. No, sorry. And, and that, like, I just want to add to that. Like that doesn't mean that you need to suddenly like, just say you are a group fitness instructor and you absolutely love teaching boot camps, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's your thing, it's your style. And now suddenly you're like boot camps maybe aren't as popular as they used to be. And you're feeling like, okay, well now do I have to go and teach Zumba because that's more yeah. popular? No, you don't need to change your whole thing, but you need to change the way that you might be approaching it. You might be packaging it. 
you might be, um, you know, the way that your wording is in your marketing. So it's, it's about, or sorry to interrupt you, but, or also changing your expectations of the outcome. Yeah. Like changing like, your expectations of the outcome in terms of like, you know, or if you were normally renting out like a, like a stadium field and you had a hundred people come, but now you're only having 20 people come find a new menu so that you can still host the same classes. You can still do the same things, but you're just, you're reducing your costs. So then you can still deliver. Well, I always like to use high, like bootcamp for an example, because we, we, when we started our business, our business bootcamp was just booming. So we got in at a time where there was very few competitors. And even as competitors started to grow, there wasn't very many strong brands. So yeah. we spent a lot of time really focusing from the jump on building our brand, our yellow, our fit chicks, fit chick power. It was for women of all levels, all abilities. We made sure it was challenging, but inclusive. Like it was very clear when people were coming to us versus John's bootcamp, the experience they were going to get. So that helped us grow and also gave us sustainability over a long period of time. But that being said, boot camp over the years has, you know, the trend where it was at eight years ago, even five years ago, it's not there anymore. However, like all fitness trends. but however, the, the workout, so our boot camp was always high intensity interval training, right? So now even still this year, again, on the top 10 trends for 2019 by the Academy of Sports Medicine, uh, on there on the top of the list is group training and high intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. So that's something, whereas maybe you were packaging your thing as a boot camp all the time, you're still going to do the same workouts. You're still going to teach what you're passionate about, but you're going to package it now as high intensity interval training. This is a high intensity interval training program. This is a group training program because we're seeing people still want that, but it's just about shifting it. So I know when, like, even for us, I loved teaching boot camp, but if I wasn't able to let go of the, the attachment to boot camp and be able to repackage it, I'm still teaching the same workouts or high intensity interval workouts for all levels, for all women, for all inclusiveness. Uh, but this way you keep it current. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest fears though, because people are like, well, I've been training for years in let's say like yoga. And now the big thing is Pilates. And it's like, no, you don't need to suddenly become a Pilates instructor as well. Because we yeah. see this all the time where instructors get into like certification, like course After collection. Certification, yeah. <laughs> They're just like, okay, but I need to know this. And if I just I do need one to more be Zumba, I need to be this. I need yeah, to and if I just do yoga. one more certification, then I'll love my business more. Then I'll be more successful. No, yeah. you need to start to learn your business. And you need to start to be, find what you're passionate about. Don't, you don't have to change that, but package it in a way that people are going to respond to and the market wants. So like mm -hmm. right now, keto, right, is the really big thing when it comes to diets. Mm -hmm. Years ago, it was paleo. You know, exactly. before that. Before that, it was Atkins. Atkins. You know, <laughs> are these <laughs> diets. To try to make a comeback. <laughs> totally. But are these diets really any different? They are when you get to the actual dietary strategies that they stand for. But if you look now at keto, keto that there's, people are promoting now is not real keto. Real keto is like 80% fat, 15% protein, and 5% uh, carbohydrates. That is an insane skewed ratio, right? And it works for people, especially if you have different um, health issues like epilepsy, a lot, like it's worked for things like MS, all of these things that have to do with brain health. Um, and also one of the side effects, of course, you burn fat really fast. But that, but people don't want to do the real keto. So now there's this new modified keto, it's which actually looks like paleo, which paleo started to look like Atkins. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like <laughs> people are just still s selling and the yeah. same things, but they're just packaging it in a way that is more current to the market, if that makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's where, when we're talking about loving your business, loving what you do, but also loving the business side of it, you've got to start to be aware of how to market your, yourself, how to package, how to talk to your ideal clients, how to shift in a way that makes you current. Mm -hmm. Um, and that of course, you know, it comes from education and it comes from support, which we have at Fitchix Academy. So shameless <laughs> self plug, make sure you're joining our free Facebook group that we have on, um, that we have, it's called build your online fitness and nutrition business. If you search it, um, I don't know the exact link right now, but it'll be with this on the bio with this uh, or on the yeah. blog page. But if you go on Fitchick, I mean, if you go on Facebook and you just search Fitchick's Academy, um, build your online fitness biz, you'll be yeah. able to find it. It'll pop up. So we're in there all the time talking about this kind of stuff. We also have our create and launch your own online program, um, which is a business program that we have starting next week, 
which is yeah. crazy. So if you want to get on the wait list, email us at info at fitchicks.ca. But um, these are the skill sets. And this is something we're both really passionate about because we see so many amazing fitness coaches, nutrition coaches, health coaches who are so good at what they do. They love what they do, but they don't know how to translate that love and that passion into something that's current into something that relates to the market, into something that they can actually build as a business to su sustain themselves for the long haul. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure you know how to do this stuff. Yeah. You need to just get those skills in check alongside with your passion skills. I can't I believe that how much things have morphed, even though just saying that, even like about the key, <laughs> like it's, oh, it's funny because it's like the same, like, I remember when like the whole eat real food, like came out, like it was this new, like, clean eating. I'm like, it's talking just about focusing on drinking water, eating vegetables. You know what I mean? <laughs> eating good quality, real food. Like, yeah. Not but it was like a whole foods. new, oh my yeah. God. There's a million books about it. Clean eating That's books. books. <laughs> yeah. Workers. Okay guys, so we're going to wrap this up. So let us know, of course, please leave us a review for this podcast. Um, if you're on iTunes, if you're on um, Stitcher, I think it is Google play, please leave us a review because of course it helps us reach more people. And also if there's anything you want us to focus on, whether it be on our business podcast or on our regular fit chicks, where we talk about fit, um, fitness, nutrition, wellness, we have a lot of great um, experts on as well. Just mm -hmm. hit us up uh, on Facebook at fit chicks Academy. Um, or again, via email info at and let us know because we definitely will add it into the rotation. Exactly. Okay, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.